If you missed part one or two, check out the link that's at the top of the picture just now. Summing up, three days prep at Kip Marina for sailing from Scotland to Poole in my new to me westerly storm turned into 10. The fully reconditioned engine with a six month warranty that was installed just before I bought her turned out not to be fully reconditioned and it didn't have a warranty. It was a booby trap. The Volvo Penta engineer did what he could, and with my crew we get away from Scotland eventually. We have a cracking sail, 130 nautical miles in 24 hours, before the engine blows smoke into the boat and battery charging was no longer possible. The RNLI towed us the last 20 nautical miles to Hollyhead, where the rest of the trip is abandoned. This is where the boat will be lifted out for a slightly unexpected semi-refit and engine rebuild. Anglesey is portrayed as rich and Jurassic with vast flora and fauna, but it's still 400 miles from home in Hampshire. So expectations for winter projects have to be rationalised with one clear objective. Put the boat in a viable, presentable condition. And that means replace or fix the engine, refurbish the engine compartment and fix the damage from the previous installation. Extend the engine bed so the front engine mounts fit, spread the load properly and bolt securely into. Refurbish the hull, fix the auto helm, replace the 12 volt battery cabling and anything else is a bonus. Before getting onto the engine, the boat needs to come ashore. Hollyhead Marina were very accommodating and she was hauled out just in time for the second COVID lockdown in Wales. The minute she was on God's dry land, look over my shoulder. The crane crew are disappearing into the yonder, physically and metaphorically. I've been left dangling. That's how she stayed until the following Monday. It was a comedy show. Preparing to extract the engine was surprisingly straightforward, what with it being a boat. I planned on undoing everything from the previous installation, especially the cheap car battery isolator switches that had been located on the way into the heads compartment, easily knocked or brushed up against when wearing foul weather gear. This is, I think, how the alternator was accidentally destroyed, causing our battery charging issues. Funnily enough, that's probably why boat builders don't install cheap isolators in doorways. But you would not believe what I found next. We can winkle this little neddy out. That's got to be the most awkwardly paced thing ever. Might just be easier to take that off. Oh look, that's loose as well. <laughs> Typical. Everything on this engine was in loose. Unbelievable. There we go. Here's something else that's loose. Just gone to disconnect the uh, raw water intake where it meets the engine and loose. Unbelievable. So that's two things. That was loose and that's loose. Disaster. Absolute disaster. And then some masked bandits appear, aka the guys from the boatyard, and they do a great job extracting the engine and pop it in my trailer. Oh, one second. Is that all right, yeah? Yeah, yeah you're all right, Paul. Oh. That's impressive, that is, up and out. Mm -hmm. Do we have to twist in it now so that end goes out? Yeah, I think so. That way, yeah. We go around, yeah. That's it. We can oh, push it, yeah? Yeah, we can push yeah, it out that as way. As soon as I've got the height, yeah, I'll yeah. do it. Just 
Take one out there, you know. Hey, Which leaves me free to crack on and start the refurbishment and the repairs. The rebuild of the engine was a complete success, down to a man who knows a lot about engines with a garage that for the rest of us only exists in our dreams. This was the flywheel housing covered in oil. Let's see what there is to be said. <laughs> well, the, the, the main problem, what, number one, I wouldn't have put those pistons with new rings back in them bores. I would have had it rebought because there is tram lies, as you can clearly see down yeah. there. They've glaze busted over it, but it ain't, you can still put your nail in the hole. Yeah. You know, a diesel engine relies on high compression. Yeah. So if you ain't got high compression, you ain't doing a lot of good. And then the second thing is this timing cover. Instead of using a gasket, they've used silicon. The silicon has gone up through the oil pump and blocked the oil ways in the crankshaft, as you can see there. Yeah. As soon as that's done that, that's what's done the big end shells. It, right. And lack, that's, lack of oil. And that's what you were showing me that with is, the metal worn yeah. off. When this was assembled as well, they they haven't really took... Can you see those indents there? They're like rust spots, but they're indents in the shells. Oh, yeah. That's contamination. There must have been dirt on there when they pulled them down because it hasn't gone round or made a mark as such. It's just... Basically, you can see the dots, which isn't good. I mean, when you rebuild an engine, you've got to be absolutely clinically clean. You don't know yeah. shit anywhere. I get the feeling it's a bit of a rush job. <laughs> yes. This was the drain pipe, I don't know whether really, in the block at the back. And you can see that has been leaking. That's where you drain your yeah. water off at the block. And you can see that was loose. You can just see all the shit down there. Oh, that was loose, was yeah. it? Oh, it was loose, yeah, you could just move that. <laughs> now, whether you, you knocked it, taking it out, I don't know, but I don't think so because you can see where it's been leaking for some time. Yes. And that's the, the, the seal yeah. inside it. Well, that's that's consistent with everything that I found because yeah. of everything that I I found was also loose. Yeah. And what uh, what were you saying about the cylinder head? The, um, the, the, the head? You, you can clearly see that by the different colours and the and the um, torch is going, uh, the rust around the injector, 
it looks like the head gasket's been leaking across this waterway. It's a new, brand new head gasket. Whether it was torqued down properly, I don't know, or cleaned up properly before. Yeah. That's something you can't tell at this stage. But we'll have to get uh, wood mills to check the head for yeah. make sure it's level. If it needs skimming, they'll have to skim it. But uh, I don't know whether they can skim those. But okay. It's really down to... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you, you would think that had done more like 50, 60 hours, hundreds of hours actually, right? You know, rather than 20 hours. Right. I'd have to check the log to see exactly how many hours the engine had done. Um, I suspect it might have been more than 20, but yeah. no, nowhere near 100. If you, if you were... That one's the worst. There's a line there. In the, if you put your fingernail in it, you can feel the line that's going up and down. You'll have to board. come around where you are. Oh yeah, you can feel that, can't you? Yeah. And and there's a lot of those. Not as bad as that one. That's the worst. You know, all the cylinders. In fact, there's one in number three here. You can see. You can just see it down there, but it's not as deep. Oh yeah. Proper scored. But that's consistent in all of them, so it's... I'm just surprised mm. they've put it back together. But then again, you don't know, or we don't know, what the previous owner who took the engine in to be rebuilt said to him. Did he say, keep well, the cost down? Well, no, he, he didn't take it in to be rebuilt. He bought it. Um, and sold it to me as a fully reconditioned engine. So he bought it off the people who had reconditioned it? He bought it off these massive so, marine people. So they've done it and they've done it on the cheap. Oh. You, you can see the amount of guns around there that's... Well, obviously, when you when you put a cover over something, it's going to squash the silicon air, but it won't yeah. just squash it out, it squashes it in as well. And if you look around here on this timing gear, just just look at it. Oh my goodness. So that's inside the engine. So it's bound to get chewed chewed round. And because it's normally you would hope that that gauze where the oil gets picked up yeah. would block it. I have seen those absolutely smothered in silicon, but it's never gone through to the shells. Uh, okay. And is the only way that you can get at that from the inside? Uh the strainer. Uh, no, not without stripping the engine and taking the uh, right. sump off. That's the only <laughs> way you get. But you, you, threads look perfectly all right in the block. So uh, a couple of them. Well, look how much that. That is goo that's been pushed into the bottom of the hole. What? So when they've squashed it on, they've then put the bolts through the timing, and that is what they've pushed through into the blind hole, which is not good. <laughs> But one was quite loose, and I thought that ah, should have tightened up, really. But mm. the threads feel fine. And one, and one was loose, did you oh, say? There was three or four of them loose on the front. Loose as in, once the timing cover was on, when I went to put my socket on, I could turn the washer. Right. So it weren't holding the foot timing cover on tight at all. <laughs> Is that because the uh, silicones now... Yeah. compressed and left it loose or did they not go around them again and talk them up mm. uh, did you bring the manual no the I've got that one on my phone but it's uh, I'll have to grab that off you at some point yeah it's easier it... to bloody little oh uh, yeah what's it and it didn't look like it was all together right so we're, as we put it together it'd be interesting because I don't know how it should be. <laughs> I've only took it apart how it was. Yeah. But that's another thing. I'd like to look at the um, manual so I can get it absolutely spot on. Yeah. Because that didn't look right. So that would be why he was having trouble switching it on and off. Killing the engine, I would think. Mm. They've just piled it on and you've ended up with as much in the engine as out. Cowboys. Mm, unfortunately, they've uh, just done it on a budget to get it back together and sell it, haven't they? But I don't know how you stand. 
look at this. Some some gaskets. Well, look at all the. Yeah, it's got everywhere, isn't it? Which is no good. Cause you oh, don't hang, have it. hang on a minute. Is that gasket or is that That's no gasket goo or silicon? It feels just yeah. like normal now, silicon. On, to that, me. on that diagram you sent me for those bits, it shows a paper, proper paper gasket for that sump. Yeah. Which is quite important as well because obviously you want the right tolerance there because you're pulling that big end shell. If you've got mm. too thick, it's not going to pull tight on the crank. Yeah. So it's got to be right. <laughs> Very interesting. <clears throat> Gearbox looks good. All it feels nice. You, that was all good, was it? I mean, we changed the oil while we've got it out. Yeah, never, like, never had a problem. But that is, it's, it's uh, sweet as a nut. That is. So there it is. The engine was completely rebuilt and then put back together again properly. And coming to the end of this three-part series, I conclude. One, no one stood a chance with that engine. It was a booby trap. And two, it was good fortune indeed to have been introduced to the guy who rebuilt it. What with him not being a commercial operation and his skill and meticulousness he is outstanding and puts so-called commercial operations to shame. Though any business taking our money ought to have his standards by default right. Hey, give the video a like if you agree. I feel like that would be a free and easy way to send a message. And you never know, those cowboys might even see this video. As for the rest of them, the broker, the previous owner and the supplier of the engine, they couldn't wash their hands of their mess fast enough. Quicker than El Chapo can povel to penitentiary fence. The supplier of the engine was offered the opportunity to fix their mess and their response was they wanted three grand plus tax to turn an engine that they sold as fit for purpose into a fit for purpose engine. Scandalous. She is now a fully viable and very presentable renamed reborn classic westerly storm. So what's next? Well, how do you think lifting goes? Will it go smoothly or will that be a comedy show too? I have a new strategy for sailing back to pool, including fireworks. When I get there, it's a great journey. Thank you so much for watching or subscribing or commenting or whatever it is. But whatever you do, go sailing.